When replacing valve cover gasket, make sure to stay until the end. We will explain about common mistake people make and how it can practically destroy your engine. If you do it right, you save a few hundred bucks. Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. Today will be a super helpful video to any of you having Todd Challenger. And if you guys need to remove or replace valve cover gasket on the 3.6 engine, I'm talking about bank one, bank two cylinder head, bolt cylinder head, stay with us, we'll explain how to do that. Uh, if you don't do some things right guys, you can end up causing quite a bit of damage to your engine. We'll talk why or you may end up doing the job again. So it's very important okay, to stand to the end and we'll share very helpful information with you that can save you uh, a few hundred dollars instead of going to the mechanic. So before we start, let me tell you a little bit about us. Every single car we get here at the garage, guys, we try to make at least two to three hundred free repair videos. Why we do that? Because our mission in the shop is to save you as much money as we can. Oh, and in return, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Uh, if you need to buy any parts, tools for your Dodge Challenger or any car, you want to save quite a bit of money, get them at a really good price and quick shipping, check out the link in the description of the video below. That's where we get all our tools and supplies from. So let's start on it now. So. What we have specifically here, this is a 3.6 dot Challenger V6 engine, 2018 year, but even if you have a different year, the procedure is about the same. Now, we have that upper engine cover removed and the intake manifold, uh, the intake holes, uh, but an intake manifold, but now uh, we'll show you how to do that step by step, okay, how to do it, because uh, valve cover on this side most of it is accessible, but still guys, okay, it's recommended to do both at the same time. Never just do one, because if you do, you will be doing the job again. So replace both at the same time. Uh, now, in order to get to this one, you need to remove the upper intake manifold. Stay with us, let's start on it, and we'll continue uh, removing the upper intake manifold. So first we're going to remove the upper engine cover. You grab and you pull straight up. It has four rubber bushings, one, two, three, four. They attach right here to these posts, as you can see, like that. And you have one towards the back. So it just comes straight out. Next, we're going to remove the intake holes. Okay, right here you can see, it has only one hose clamp with eight millimeter that we're going to pretty loosen. So let's go ahead, do that now. Perfect. We're going to come on this side first. Okay, we're going to go ahead, pre-loosen that one. And I'm going to disconnect the intake temperature sensor here. Okay, and we can grab that hose, pull it out. Right here it has one rubber bushing that you need to pull straight up. You cannot just wiggle it all the time, you just have to pull straight up and pull the rubber bushing out of here. Now, the car battery should be disconnected because uh, you'll be closer, okay, to electrical connections, disconnecting things, and on these modern cars, it really matters which battery terminal you disconnect and reconnect first if you do it the wrong way. You can burn the engine computer electronics modules that can cost you thousands of dollars. So we have a special video that explains which battery terminal to disconnect first. Now we have a few, okay, clips that we're going to pry out of here. Okay, that's great. And then we're going to go ahead and start disconnecting wires here. Okay, that's for the throttle body. Press here. Okay, push in, release the pressure, pull out, and that wire will come out as well. So we kind of like need to remember where they need to go later. Perfect. Now this is a map sensor right there, we need to disconnect that one as well. So let's go ahead and do that. We have one vacuum hose, careful not to break it, it's super easy if you do. You will guys need to replace the intake manifold and that could be pricey. So this one came out too, perfect. We're going to have one wiring harness, let's see what else we have here. We might need to move some later here. Okay, that wire I wonder. Okay, that hose needs to come out. This is from the PCV valve. 
Okay, that mount will stay here, so we'll just need to uh, remove that nut there now. So there are a few things, guys, as you can see. The engine started looking more appealing now. We can see more things, so that can definitely help us. So 10 millimeters, careful not to drop the nut. Perfect, one is out. Next, okay, let's analyze everywhere. Here we have one mount, another 10 millimeter right here, which is actually kind of like hidden, so we need to get the ratchet. Okay, it's right there, that nut. Hard to access, so we'll need to do by hand or with a wrench. And uh, this is holding the upper intake manifold. You need to remove that upper intake manifold for multiple repairs. Anything such as spark plugs on cylinder 2, 4 and 6. Ignition coils on cylinder 2, 4 and 6. If you need to uh, remove or replace fuel injectors. If you need to remove and replace knock sensors. Uh, coolant temperature sensor, oil pressure sensor, oil temperature sensor. You also guys have uh, the oil cooler which is a uh, weak spot on those. And, okay, one more nut there. This one, only with a wrench. Okay, that oil cooler, the gaskets are a weak spot. What happens, uh, it develops uh, leaks. It can develop coolant and oil leak, and it can even mix oil and coolant, and that can be practically, guys, catastrophic. Uh, we have a link, okay. Uh, to where we can buy new cool, uh, oil cooler. Uh, you can check out the video on Pentastar 3.6 engine. This is known as the Pentastar engine. Perfect, we should be ready on this side. So now we're going to go ahead, start with eight millimeter and we'll need to start preloading some bolts. No, it's not going to work probably there. We need to get a longer extension because we don't want to risk damaging the intake manifold. So bolt number five, bolt number six now. Okay, and we should probably have yeah. More now, yep, right there, seven. And we have bolt number, let me see if we have one more somewhere here. I just want to analyze to see. We do have one somewhere, somewhere else. Let me see now. So there is one more bolt, guys, right there. Uh, one more nut, excuse me. Now we need to remove those studs, uh, or whatever you call those things. Okay, the bolts that hold the nuts. So we're going to go ahead, grab that here. Okay, let's see if this one works. This one is super tight, I cannot do it with one hand. Let's see if it's going to fit there. We're talking about this right there in the next one because otherwise we will not be able to remove the intake manifold okay it's okay it may not work we'll s no because it has a washer on the back side and it puts back pressure on the plastic manifold so don't do that you can damage it that way this is exactly the same on this side so let's analyze and see the best way to do that is to remove that mount right here okay and let's see where we have okay bolts for these mounts or these two on this side these ones they have only one bolt from what i can see down there on each mount so let's see which one we need to do so now I uh, will try without removing them, get a prime tube, but if you pry too hard, you can break your intake manifold. So you have to be extremely careful. If not, we will recommend to remove the mount. 
Okay, I'm almost, almost out. But you can see just a little bit holding there. Yep, almost out of there. Let me see if we can just maybe even remove one of them. They put those brackets and it fixes everything in place, which makes it really inconvenient. Later you can easily probably push them and Okay, this one came out, this one's out, this one's out there too. So that will do it guys, we don't need to remove, but you have to be careful not to break your... Okay, now, common mistakes people make here, one second, one second, one second. Okay, you drop something there inside, you don't see it, or even if you see it, sometimes you may have a really hard time removing it. What will happen, goes in the engine. Uh, you start it, hits valve, piston, cylinder, and you can say bye bye to your engine guys and you need the engine rebuilt or replaced after that. So uh, be extremely careful and uh, I recommend to cover these holes, that way uh, you can minimize the chance for dropping something in the intake uh, uh, manifold. Now let me show you something quick, these gaskets need to be replaced every time you remove it. We'll put a link where you can get intake manifold gasket for the 3.6 engine. So check it out and uh, you will be able to do that. Uh, because otherwise guys, okay, you can develop a vacuum leak, have an unstable vehicle operation, rough idle, vacuum leak code, lean fuel mixture code, something that will be super hard to fix. So, be very careful not to drop anything here in the lower intake manifold. If you do, it will make its way to the valves. You can bend the valve, you can get in the cylinder, it can destroy piston, engine, block, or cylinder head. So, torque 30, and we're going to go ahead and disconnect, okay, that camshaft position sensor. So, let's go ahead, do that. We're going to pull it on. Great and this is actually two camshaft position sensors in one you will see that's a really interesting design due to the fact that uh, it can read on both sides so it's two sensors integrated in one the board will not come off all the way be careful when you pull it go sideways let me show you this is two sensors in one one on each side so now let's go ahead okay and show you what we need to do next ignition coils let's do those quick okay you pull that red thing to the back push the connector in press down disconnect it okay one more and those will be uh, really really stuck okay perfect i think one of them wasn't pushed in from the factory because this engine hasn't been taken apart yet. Remove the bolts with 10 millimeter socket. Grab it, pull those. Perfect. Okay, number three. Next, camshaft actuators, also known as phasers. We're going to go ahead, okay, disconnect those as well. The thing is all the way towards the back, right there. It's with Torx. Okay, let me see. Torx 25, start looking big. Very important not to drop anything inside your engine too. Now, uh, one thing I want to show you while we're actually pre-loosening these bolts, guys. One additive, okay, you can check the link in the description of the video below to it. This additive, you do it before engine oil changes, engine flush by Licky Molly. This thing does wonders. 
We use it on a Porsche Cayenne with 190,000 miles, almost 200,000 miles. We removed the valve cover to replace gaskets and the engine looked like it was almost brand new. That additive is amazing stuff guys. I wasn't a believer in those things until I used it. So we'll pull those out. Make sure you replace those gaskets here too. We'll show you in a second. Comes out. Now these gaskets sometimes they'll come out with the actuator phaser sometimes. Okay, check it out. They'll stay there. So you need to replace those two. Okay, not just not just the valve cover gasket itself. We need to get okay now prime two for all the wirings. Okay. Yeah, gently. No no no. Go the other way now. Okay, this one is extremely long. Okay, it came out. It's ready. So we have on this side now, here too. Perfect. Now we have this one here by the... Okay, okay, we have one that's going down by the alternator there. We have that big one here. Perfect. We have one little one on this side. Perfect. On top, we have one more there. Okay, we're not... We need to get the thin one there to go underneath. Perfect. No, no, don't push sideways too much because it can break you have to kind of like try to pull them straight out otherwise those plastic ones will crack guys okay and one more right there but we have the fuel injector too so we have to be careful Okay, now, injectors, we don't need to, from what I see, we don't need to disconnect them. We we'll have enough room for that. We need to get now eight millimeter. It looks like it's eight. And we need to start removing bolts, guys. The left and the right cylinder head will be identical. Okay, only the same for bolt. Usually you, you may even go in a cross pattern. That's the recommended thing to do when removing it. Go kind of like in an X pattern. Okay, this one needs to be unscrewed. This is the post, remember it goes on the third post, in the middle bolt, between these two cylinders. This is cylinder number one and three. Now, all those things are re removed, let's just place that gasket there, okay, remove the other gasket. And let's see if we have anything else holding, I don't think we do, that's, no, that one doesn't need to come out, it comes with the gasket, that's a PCV valve. Uh, these bolts will stay there, so practically, okay, we should be able to pry, you have silicone applied right there, you can see that drop of silicone there. And here, this is due to the fact that's where the timing cover meets the engine block. Uh, so we're going to go, okay, probably right here. There is space right there, right there between the two. Pry a little bit, carefully. Okay, same thing needs to apply to the other side. Okay, looks like this. Let's see if this bracket is in the way, no. One second, it looks like. 
We still have something holding here. One second. Let me inspect everything on this side and we'll see what we have here specifically, guys. Here we have one plastic guide on the bottom that we need to pry off. Okay, one second, one second. Nope, 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 nope. We need to remove the PCV. PCV valve on the left side. This one needs to come out. It goes in the oil separator on the inside, I believe. Let's see, just not to risk it. Let's remove it. It has two screws with Torx 25, T25 on the back. One here, one towards the bottom. We need to go ahead and remove this. That's why it's a good thing to watch the video towards uh, the whole video, not just the beginning, because you have an idea. On this side, you will not have that one. Okay, you have the holes that I don't believe. Okay, you have it. No, it's just the holes that you need to disconnect. So let's see if it's going to come out now. Perfect. The bolts are coming. Just one on top. That's the easy, easy one. Perfect. Now we grab it, pull it out. That's a PCV valve. So let's see if it's going to come out now. Just to make sure so we don't risk things, guys, right? Yep. No. It looks like some bolts over the cable here is still holding a little bit. Okay. Let's see which way it needs to go. If we have to, we will disconnect the few injectors so we can slide over a little bit. But it comes on in one certain angle, most likely. Let's see what is limiting us now. And what doesn't let us come out all the way. So here, it will need to come out probably Okay, the bracket is right there. That bracket is what is limiting us. So let me check quick. That metal bracket that we have here for the throttle body is what is causing the trouble because here we'll need to slide more towards the back and that bracket will be in the way. So what we'll need to do, okay, we'll need to disconnect that bracket here that we have and that bracket has another hose it's always a mess, those valve covers, but do it yourself and you can save some serious money. Right here, the bracket, guys, okay. Yes, okay, I need to get the prying tool for the clips, right there. Need to disconnect, okay, that thing on the back. Okay, let me see if I can. Get to it, it's the one that goes over the thread. Very, very limited room, guys. So let us disconnect that one so I can grab it with two hands. So we disconnect it, guys. All I had to do is just grab it with two hands. Okay. And now there is one bolt here that we need to remove. Okay. It's not, it's not loose yet. My hand. Okay, let's try it now. See if it's gonna go by hand. That holds the bracket. Okay, 
Okay, it moved quite a bit even without removing it. Now if we lift up, we have to lift it up at the same time. Okay, let's inspect now. It comes in an angle. Here, we got that wiring cable out of the way. That's the valve cover. Right here, guys, and valve cover gasket. Engine, timing chain, all that stuff is right here. And now we will explain what else you need to do. Now, when replacing the valve cover gaskets, it's not just one gasket you need to replace. Multiple gaskets, and there is uh, one trick that you need to do. Otherwise, you'll be doing the job again because you'll develop a leak in the future again. This is the main gasket. You need to grab this one. You can see and it comes out of the canal. Okay, you can see it has a double canal, kind of like double holding on top and bottom. And you just simply, guys, okay, pull this thing out. You can see it's not very complicated at all. The whole gasket comes out. Okay, here you have the silicone where it was applied. And you're going to go, okay, on this side. And just pull it out. Perfect. This is the whole gasket. Now, we have something else too. What I'm talking about, we can just leave it here, okay. This is a little bitty gaskets for the um, uh, spark plug wells, spark plug holes, replace those as well. Or you can start sipping oil in the spark plug holes, the wells, and if you get engine oil, it can cause misfires, multiple things, which can be really hard to diagnose and fix. Replace the gasket for the camshaft position sensor, and replace the two gaskets right here for the variable timing actuators. Now, right here, you have to clean the silicone from right there and here. Those are the two places where you will need to apply silicone. Clean the whole area with rubbing alcohol, pharmacy grade alcohol. When you clean it, apply the high temp gray silicone. We'll put the link in the description of the video below where you can get it from. A little bit of here where the timing cover meets the engine block. You can see and a little bit on this side as well. And later, you need to install it. If you want to see the torque specs for the valve cover, guys, we'll have the video on our channel. Uh, check it out. Dot Challenger valve cover torque specs and sequence, and it will teach you how to properly install it, or you may be doing the job again. Careful not to drop anything inside the engine, because if you don't know, you put it together, that can destroy your engine, guys. Hopefully the video will be helpful. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.